Uncle Hamilton made two trips to Africa to collect chimpanzee samples. Sadly, during the second trip, he contracted malaria and died in March 2000. Before his death, Hamilton had asked the Royal Society of Scientists in London, England, to stage a debate on the hunter versus the vaccine theory of the origin of AIDS. In his memory, the conference went ahead. Edward Hooper was invited to present his evidence to Kaprowski in the scientific community. It was the first time they had ever invited a non-scientist to debate a theory with renowned experts in the field. I am not to defend myself, Hooper has to defend himself. Certainly this meeting is very welcome. I think it's a good meeting, it's an unusual meeting. That a journalist presents a hypothesis without facts, and here come the scientists and give him all the scientific facts. I think we're going to have uh, a real debate today. I think it's going to be a worthwhile debate. I don't think it's between Kaprowski and myself. I think it's uh, about something far more important than that. From the opening of the conference, arguments were launched against Hooper's theory. Even the date when AIDS emerged among men was challenged. But the final blow to Hooper was a surprise announcement that samples of Kaprowski's vaccine had been located and tested and contained no trace of HIV, SIV, or chimp DNA. That left little room for Hooper to respond. This did offend Ed Hooper because he was clearly the underdog at the meeting. But science is a very cruel culture. We go by evidence. And although we may be fooled in our interpretation, we may fool ourselves in misinterpreting evidence. In the end, hard evidence wins the day. But the scientific evidence that signaled the death knell for the polio vaccine theory needed to be re-examined. Exactly what was tested? The actual samples that were used in the Congo between late 1957 and the beginning of 1960, of course, don't exist anymore. They were used. But one of the samples tested was the very same lot of virus as Hooper thinks is by far the most likely to have been contaminated that was used in the Congo, the CHAT 10A11. Similar samples? Maybe. But the real question is, was it or was it not used in the Congo? This was discovered here in the UK, who had received it in 1981 from the State Serum Institute in Stockholm, who in turn had received it from the Wistar Institute around the time it was made. And it was sealed and had never been opened. So the sample remained sealed since it was made at Kaprowski's laboratory. All one can say for certain is that it was never used in the Congo. Is this enough scientific rigor to use as a decisive statement against the polio vaccine theory? This was another event in which the scientists eventually conjoined and had a public lynching in London for the Royal Society in which they once again claimed to have laid rest to the idea that HIV could have come from polio vaccine. And I don't think they did a better job than they had done before. There are still great gaping holes in their story. We wanted to see for ourselves if SIV carrying chimpanzees were used just for testing or if their organs were used to make Kaprowski's vaccine. So we returned to the Congo, where it all took place. This is Stanleyville, Belgian Congo's former capital. On the outskirts of town lie the remains of the vast Stanleyville Medical Laboratory. In 1957, it was a sparkling new facility where Kaprowski set up his operations to produce and test his polio vaccine on the local people. Camp Lindy, which housed the chimpanzees, was built on a peninsula of the Lindy River, 40 minutes upstream from Stanleyville. To get there, we had to take the road and then a ferry to cross the river. During his research, Edward Hooper had found Christoph Bayello, one of the assistants working at Camp Lindy. Bayello agreed to guide us there. 
In the 1950s, he was in charge of caring for and feeding the chimpanzees. What secret is Bayelo talking about? In the jungle, only a few traces remain, but other images bring these abandoned sites back to life. These photographs were taken by Tom Norton, Kaprowski's right-hand man. The photos help date one of Kaprowski's trips to the Congo, February 1957. It corresponds to an event, the first big influx of chimpanzees to Camp Lindy. More than 100 chimpanzees, an exorbitant number, captured in about 15 days. An important visit it's immortalized with a symbolic handshake between the two co-founders, Ghislain Courtois and Hilary Kaprowski.